One of the regular questions that I'm being asked by Illustrator users is how do we apply a different tint of a colour and also how can we change our colours in our swatches panel and see those changes reflected in our artwork. So let me first illustrate what the issue is. If I start applying a fill colour to these three objects, if I wanted to get a little bit of an idea of depth, I normally apply a different shade or a different tint of that colour. Now if you were using Adobe InDesign, when you're using colors from the swatches panel, you will always see a tint slider at the top in that swatches panel. Illustrator doesn't have that. If you wanted to apply a particular shade of this color that we've now applied, um, all we could really do is go to the color panel and whilst holding down the shift key on the keyboard, drag these sliders down a bit and that would create the appearance of depth and also the appearance of having used different shades of the same color. That seems to be cool and it seems to be working. The issue that we're now still dealing with is what happens if we were to go back to our swatches panel and change that particular swatch that we've started out applying. If I select this object you'll see that it does seem to highlight this color in the swatches panel so there seems to be a link. Let's see if that's a true link. I'm going to double click this swatch. You can also go to the swatch options from the swatches panel menu to access that same dialog box. But I'll just double click it and I'll make a change here and I'll just make this color a little lighter. It's a bit pinky but that's okay just to indicate that nothing actually happens to my artwork. Even when I click OK, absolutely nothing has happened. So how can we fix this problem? Let's have a look. I'm just going to step back by doing a couple of undoes and let's start by looking at how this color is actually defined. Double click on the color again to get to the swatch options. It's a process color, it's all nicely done. But the only thing that is not enabled at this moment is this option right here in the swatch options. If you select that, what will happen is when you start to apply this color throughout your artwork, the color in the artwork will be associated with the swatch in the swatches panel. So that's the first great thing. Let's click OK and I'm now going to apply that color to these three areas again. And let's now have a look at what happens as a secondary side effect, positive side effect, of having to find this color as a global color. If I go to the color panel now, you'll see that I have access to a tint slider and that makes applying particular tints and percentages of a color much, much easier. And as I said, the color is now applied globally. That means that both the tints and the solid color are associated with the swatch in the swatches panel. So if I now decide that you know this is a little green looking cheese and I want to pull out maybe a little bit of magenta and a little bit of black, all I need to do is edit that color. Let's pull out a little bit of black and as soon as I enable the preview option you will see that that now changes this artwork globally. So if you want to apply colors that are associated with the swatches panel so that you can edit your color colors in the swatches panel and see those edits reflected in your artwork. Always enable the global options option and that will work for CMYK and RGB color. So whether you're creating web graphics or print graphics, the theory behind this is identical. The side effect or the second thing that enabling the global option will allow you to do is very easily apply different shades of the same color from the color panel. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful.